<coughs> Morning, everyone. Morning. It's very nice to be here again. Um, it's not often I do this, you know. I don't, I'm not like a, a traveling speaker, apart from when I come here, which is quite nice. So um, I feel like, yeah, it's nice. Um, uh, for those who I've not met before, I'm Andrea. I work for Edge Ministries up in Chesterfield. Uh, we are a rescue mission, an out-and-out -out rescue mission. We want to share the gospel with people. Um, but I think it was William Booth that famously said, it's hard to share the love of God with people when their tummies are empty and the feet are cold. And so that's kind of our ethos, um, really. So we're very busy across three or four centres in Chesterfield. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. I am going to share a little bit from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16 onwards. Um, and it goes, people swear by someone greater than themselves. And the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it's impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on, on our behalf. He has become high, high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And that's kind of what um, I've based my thoughts on as I prepare this talk. So if we uh, might just pray a little bit into that, if that's okay. Um, Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your mercies are new every morning. I thank you and I praise you for the hope that you have given to us. I pray, Father God, that, um, that you'll help me to share um, your heart with these good people. I pray, Father, that um, hope and joy and peace and encouragement will be, will be left in the hearts of these people today. All in your name, by your spirit, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. That first uh, verse in that passage, people swear by someone greater than themselves, something greater than themselves. And that's, um, I was sharing my testimony with some friends the other day and um, I was kind of reminded that, that something greater than themselves is the first way that I believed really as a child. Um, I had like a foundational belief that there was something greater than me, that there was a God, but I couldn't tell you anything about him, couldn't tell you what he thought about me, couldn't tell you anything really. Um, and now that I do have faith in the God of the Bible, um, I can't help but see his fingerprints all around me in creation. Um, you know, I think about the world it, as a whole, if I zoom out and I think, do you know what? If we were just a little bit further away from the sun, it would be terrible. If we were a little bit closer to the sun, it would be terrible. Everything is so finely tuned. You know, the, the moon is how many thousands of miles away? And yet the gravity of the, of the moon affects our oceans and the tides. And so I just find it absolutely amazing how you can see that there is something so massive around us and it's by design um, and one of the one of my most amazing memories of nature was when I was in New Zealand in 2003 I lived there um, for a year when I was 19 20 and um, I hadn't been there for very long at this point and I was homesick I was overwhelmed I was literally on the other side of the planet from from my family and I thought it was I felt a bit sorry for myself and um, I, uh, I was a smoker at the time, so I went for a late night cigarette and a stroll by the seafront. And it was a crisp and clear night, a moonlit night. And it was in a, like a little protected bay overlooking a little mountain. Um, and there was what I think was a group of stingrays, I think, feeding along the water's edge. Uh, or along the water, what's it called? The surface, that's it. Um, and the wings, whatever they're called, it sounds daft to say that of, of something that lives in the water has wings, but it was just 
um, flapping really gracefully in the moon. I, I don't know, I'm making a hash of this, but it was beautiful, basically. It was beautiful in the moonlight, in that still sort of setting. And I thought, wow. I was absolutely wowed. But why? Why do I care? Why do I look at a sunset and go, wow? It's only there for a fleeting moment. But I go, wow. And I think because we're made to worship something that's greater than us. We're designed to have a response to the things I th uh, uh, that God has placed around us, I think. Like I, I think about my cats. They don't care. Molly doesn't care about sunset. If she hears bird songs, she goes, mm, breakfast, <laughs> you know? <laughs> they don't care, but we do. And I think, it, it, for me, the fact that I am wired that way points to God, and it builds my faith. It gives me confidence in my faith. Um, and then I think of the next step of, of my journey of faith, coming to know Jesus. Um, and that came about at a time when I was heading into depression. I think I may have shared that a little bit in my testimony before. Um, and I'm quite a practical person. I'd been in depression before and I thought I want to do something. I want to meet it at the door. I want to nip it in the bud if I can. Um, it's not always possible, but that's what I wanted to do. So I took my friend up on her invitation to go to church. And coming to know Jesus <coughs> is where I came to know hope that hope that is firm and secure and the it's just the ultimate life changer isn't it ultimate life changer and i love that this passage in hebrews talks about hope as an anchor for the soul i think you can really see an anchor coming into its own storm kind of when you're being pushed and pulled and tossed and and that and that anchor holding you firm and secure in place um and I've recently had that sort of play out in my, in my own life. Um, you know, because just because we come to know Jesus and we come to know hope, that doesn't mean that life is straightforward and simple and easy. And I don't know what your battles look like, but I'm pretty sure that you have them because that's life. Life is complicated. Um, but God remains the same throughout. Uh, Psalm 73, 26 says my flesh and my heart may fail but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever well, that's beautiful um, and I wonder if you will allow me to be a bit open and vulnerable which is very uncomfortable but I think it's good for us to share the highs and the lows the good and the bad because it's easy to look around at, at people who think well they've all got it together they, uh, if, if they only knew you know, what my life really looks like, and so on and so forth. But we all know that life is difficult. We all know. Um, and there was a, a time uh, last year, end of last year, it's been a bit difficult. I've, I've sort of suffered some loss, um, had some change, and it's, it's been very hard, really. And I didn't struggle with unbelief. My faith has always been strong, um, but I struggled with not understanding. I didn't get it. You know when you're in that place where you're crying out to God? You're really crying out to God and you go, where, where are you? I don't understand. Because when, like that song, that children's song that we sang today, like God is with me every step of the way, I believe that deeply in my heart and I know that that's true when the Bible tells me that God will never leave me or forsake me I know that that's true so where is he I didn't get it I just didn't get it and um, I uh, sort of over over a period of time in various settings I feel like God sort of answered that question for me a little bit which is why I share it today because it might be that you're in the same situation or you may come to that situation um, and actually I'll go back a bit because the reason I didn't quite get why he was silent or why nothing happened as it were was because I've had it happen before when our youngest son Joe 
was about three weeks old and this is a child that we we struggled to conceive we really prayed for him to come along and when he was three weeks old he caught a virus he caught bronchiolitis and he was in hospital for a week all wired up with you know to machines and tubes and and beeping things and it was horrendous it was horrible and I was in there for about a week with him and I think it was about at the midway point where I had been stood next to his cot. <laughs> in hindsight, it's kind of funny because I stroked all his hair off, <laughs> apart from a little tuft right at the front. So he had hair lying here and, and at the tuft. He looked like a little baby monk. It was quite funny. Um, but that day was not funny. I, had j I was at the end of myself. I was at the end of my tether completely and utterly. I could do nothing to help this little boy of ours. Um, and we had our separate little room right by the nurse's station and I shut the door and I broke down completely and um, I, that was it, I, I surrendered basically because I think I'd been holding, I'd be like, I'll fix it, I'll fix it, I can't fix it, I'm not a healer, but he is. Um, and at that point where I broke down, um, that was one of the, the few actually sort of supernatural moments that I've had in my life um, God said to me in my voice in my head but I wasn't controlling this thought or this sentence that was told to me and um, he said he's going to pull through and then this wave of peace that didn't make any sense whatsoever because my situation hadn't changed my circumstances hadn't changed but this wave of peace just washed over me and I slept and from that day he started getting better and so fast forward then nine years to this point where I'm like I know that you can give me peace where are you why is, what's happening um, and I understand now that pain is blinding that was the first sort of sentence that that started making sense of him it, it came in a podcast I think um, and it was a sentence that just stood out to me and I go, oh, hang on a minute, this resonates with me. I understand that pain is blinding. You know yourself if you stub your toe on the coffee table, you go, ooh, or you see stars. You can't see clearly. And the same when you're in pain, you're screaming internally. So you can't hear him. And when you're in pain, you're thrashing, so you can't feel him. And what he was waiting for was for me to be still. And that's the million dollar question maybe how can you be still but actually you just wait it out actually i think because he is with you he is with you he will never leave or forsake you um and the verse that has really helped me to be still is exodus fourteen fourteen. the lord himself will fight for you you need only be still and I think we can do that. And I think God can take it when we are authentic with him. Because he knows anyway. He knows what's going in, on in your heart. We can't churchianity or Christianese him. He knows. He knows. So we can be authentic. He can take it. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I've written in my notes, be still, lean in on God recognize him as the rock that you can build your life on and you can fall down on that rock but you can't fall off the rock because he'll catch you um <coughs> excuse me a few weeks ago i went indoor climbing with a bunch of che uh, chesterfield women and it's one of them things that i've always had uh i, I wanted to have a go at because i just think do you know what that looks like a good time uh, and it's it is isn't it um and it was, it was nice. It was a room similar to this with um, each section of wall was kind of a, a varying degrees of difficulty. So there was like a simple wall, a very difficult wall and, and so on and so forth. Um, and it was nice because, so we had a couple of instructors with us. And so we could only, there could only be two climbs going at any time. So, and there was a group of maybe 10 of us, something like that. And as each person was climbing, you know, the rest of us were like, come on, you got this. And like, oh, you've got uh, a hold just by your left knee. If you can just, you know, reach for it and that kind of thing. And 
the reason I bring this up is because I witnessed something that I was really inspired by, and that was my friend Lucy and her last climb of the day. So we'd been going for about an hour and a half at this point. It was, you know, knees were jelly, arms were sore, I had scuff marks and, and all sorts. Um, and she started climbing and it was quite a difficult wall at this point because our instructors were like, no, no, you can do this one, you can do this one. Um, and she was pausing quite a lot along the way. So there was a lot of like, come on, Lucy, come on, Lucy, you can do this. And she came off that wall three times, three times, but every single time she went back on it. She rested a little bit because you are roped in. You've got a harness, you've got rope, you've got knots, you got, you're, you're safe, basically. And three times she went back on that wall. I'm like, I, I just absolutely love that picture of literally hanging in there because God's got you. For me, my faith in Jesus is that firm and secure anchor, that rope and that harness. And f all you need, really, and I think I, I bring this up because I think it's applicable in any sphere of life, whether it's your church life, whether it's your work life, school, raising a family, social interactions, whatever it might be. All you need is that faith that Jesus has literally got you, you just need to get to the next handhold. You just need to, and the cool thing about being harnessed is that you can just throw yourself in a way that you wouldn't naturally. If you had no harness, you'd be like, no, I'm not even touching that wall, I'll stay right, right where I am. But with that faith in that harness, in Jesus, you can, you can do it. Just imagine what you can do, what he can do through you, if you just have that hope in that, uh, in that, in that, in him, because he's got you firm and secure. Um, I know that my storm isn't over yet. I actually think that parts, parts of this next f few months, because I'm going through <coughs> kind of like Christian counselling, essentially. So I've got some brutal moments in front of me at the moment. I'm, I'm going to have to dig into all of that stuff that I've kicked to the curb for however long but it's going to be all right it's going to be uncomfortable but it's going to be all right and at the end of it I know already that I will have a powerful testimony to encourage people with to help people with because that's what we do you know God's not going to let anything go to waste whatever you guys are going through you might not also be in that space right now where things are difficult and that i mean praise the lord that's a great thing but i bet you any money that your church family or friends outside of here are in difficult times and they need you they need your encouragement they need that come on lucy you can do it kind of thing from you and um, in the edge faith community we have these little cards and um, that we give out and um, on the this side, it's got Luke 4, 18 to 19. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And on the other side, we've got stuff we do. We like it, we like it quite simple. These are essentially rules of life that we, that kind of explains what the edge faith community is and this is sort of our heart behind it and it goes i'll ask jesus to guide my daily decisions i'll be generous with my words and my stuff i'll love others like jesus loves me i'll read my bible and try my best to live it out with the help of the holy spirit and it's the second one i want to talk a little bit about now i'll be generous with my words and my stuff um I'm going to tell a little bit, a little bit of a football story. Um, me and my boys, we follow Chesterfield Football Club. Uh, it's been a great season. It's been a lot of fun, and we um, go to as many games as we can. But we also we've we've dabbled with the odd away game this season, <laughs> which is so much fun. I love it. You know, we we fill up the car with snacks and sandwiches and we've got a little playlist and, and everything. And it's a good time. It's, it's an adventure for us. And a few weeks ago, we went to Halifax 
Um, we lost that game horrendously. It was really not a good time, but we didn't know that going. And the build-up, the atmosphere was amazing because we thought that might be the match where we get the trophy, where we gather so many points that none of the other teams can catch us. So we thought maybe, just maybe, come on. And there was about two and a half thousand Chesterfield people in this away end. And we were chanting and we were champions, elect ole ole, it was so much fun. Uh, this is not a good time for everyone, but for me, I was a kid at Christmas. I absolutely love it. And then I see um, our resident drummer come in onto the stands with his drum in tow. And I'm like, oh, my days is going to turn up right now. And he starts joining in with the drum. Doom, da -doom, da -doom. And I'm, oh, honestly, it was just electric. We were so happy. We were so excited. As I say, it didn't go that well that day, but... Anyway, it was, uh, it was a good time. And I thought, Do you know what? A few days after, I'm going to send him a message because that, to me, was an amazing memory. Like me and my, my little Joe, we just we had such a good time. We were happy. It was a happy memory. And he played a part in that. <coughs> and I thought, Do you know what? I'm going to send him a message. And I'm a little bit socially awkward. It's not, you know, it's not easy. What if he thinks I'm really weird? Like, he doesn't know me. Um, <laughs> and so I sent him a message and I just said, thank you so much for everything that you do. Because he turns up, you know, every game and he's always drumming, trying to keep us all in, in time. It doesn't always work. Um, and, you know, on a cold Tuesday night, it, it's not always fun, I don't think. We don't always play very well, but... Um, so I sent him a message and I just said, you know what, thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. You know, you play a big part in creating memories for a lot of family, uh, uh, families across the ground. And as it happens, that message fell really well. He said, you know what, I really appreciate that because I sometimes get a lot of stick. And who, who'd have thought in, in football, just as in any other sphere of life, there can be a lot of friendly fire. And I don't think for one second that I changed his life with a nice message, but maybe next time he gets stick from someone, he'll remember, do you know what? It's not all bad. Some people do actually appreciate what I do. Um, and that's the thing about being generous with our words. It's powerful. You know, kindness and encouragement is powerful. We can think of it as like a pink fluffy kind of concept, but it's powerful. It's world changing, actually. And you, each, of, each and every single one of you have got that power on the inside. If you go out about your business, whether it's in, you know, here, um, as people come into the cafes or as you invite people to come along into church, as you share your testimony, as you share your faith, it's powerful and it's world changing and we never know who we're gonna be speaking to who might really be at the end of their tether, who might really just need a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of kindness, just to get to that next handhold on their wall, you know? It's powerful. You might be carrying someone else's joy, so let's make sure that we share it often, often. Um, in this uh, counseling thing um, I'm doing, I had to write down my life story the other day, which was, wow, it took me a long time. It was supposed to be bullet points, but I'm a bit wordy, so it was, <laughs> it, it took a lot of doing. Um, and I remembered um, two memories from my, well, childhood, my teens, I suppose. One when I was 11 and one when I was 15, when I chose to basically commit social suicide, um, my, my peers, at the time will have jeered me for the sake of my kindness. I wanted to be kind to someone um, and I have never regretted them. It was horrible at the time, but I know it was the right thing to do. And I don't think you'll regret kindness. If you carry God's heart for people and you act from that and you live in response to the gospel and his sacrificial love for you, you won't regret it. And he'll catch you if it goes a bit wrong. You know, it's worth maybe just feeling a bit silly. It's worth being maybe ridiculed, actually. Because what if, what if that person that you speak to 
in a kind way. Really needs you to. You can, it's world changing. And I know that sounds like, you know, all right, calm down. <laughs> but no, it's world changing. That's how we change the world. You know, this Salby bubble, I think, is a, probably about the same size as my Tupton bubble in Chesterfield. And I can't affect much what happens outside of it, but I can affect what happens in my own bubble. And I want to because Jesus died for me, for me to be in right relationship with God. And that's powerful. And it's hope giving. And that hope is firm and secure. And he won't, he won't leave you or forsake you. It doesn't mean that life's always going to be easy, but he won't leave you or forsake you. And so I want to encourage you as well, as you go about your business this week, whether you go for walks in nature or whatever, when you're in God's creation, not just man's creation with buildings and cars and whatnot, but when you see God's creation around you, let that build your faith and your confidence and let it remind you at all times that God is with you and he is good and he is for you. So we can be bold and we can be brave and we, be, we can be kind. Because people need us to, actually. I uh, just want to end with a short and simple verse from Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.